Is well, first of all, all these ways we talk in the West about mental illness, if we look at what Buddha's saying, yeah. he uses the word klesha in Sanskrit for the, for the problems in the mind, and that means, a, that means like a, it's, called, it's, it's just translated in English as affliction. And if you look at the word affliction, which is med very medieval, it actually means a problem. So what kind of problem? A mental problem. Well, a really excellent translation for Buddha's term klesha is a mental illness. So honey, Buddha's saying we're all mentally ill. So that exactly is what's correct. We should be using Buddha's methods to help us lessen our attachment, lessen our neuroses, lessen our anger, lessen our fears. Of course we should, but you can't just leap into meditation, that's bizarre. You've got to start controlling your body and speech first, having some discipline, living in vows, having a proper disciplined life, then you can begin to meditate. But if that's not enough, you have to also understand Buddha's model of the mind. It's very distinct where he describes these different sufferings in the mind. So you need to be a very you know, reasonable, steady person to look at your mind. But that's exactly what Buddhism is about. We all have mental problems and they're called attachment and anger and fears and depression and jealousy. And the Buddha has many marvelous, extraordinary, sophisticated techniques to help us understand them so we have to be have to start slowly and go one step at a time that's that's the approach that's what buddhism's for mm -hmm. to help us with our mental problems They're human beings like you and me, there's no difference, except the difference is they're living in shitholes and treated like animals, and they actually, the ones who are serious practitioners take it seriously, so they actually change their minds, whereas, you know, when we're outside of prison, we just keep blaming everything else. So the ones I know are really serious practitioners, because they realise they can't get out of prison, they can't stop pe people being mean to them, they can't change their situation, so they're doing what Buddha says by changing their minds, which is really what you're doing as a Buddhist, trying to understand your mind and change that. So I have great admiration. Well, I mean, it's easy enough to get it. You just have to live with a boyfriend you don't like. Live with a girlfriend you don't like. Be, you know, live with your mother who you can't stand. That's putting yourself in prison. Don't need to go to prison to do that. To, but we don't like defining ugly situations, do we? We just keep thinking we want to have nice things. Yeah. It's not, of course it's not good. It's disgusting being in prison. But they don't have a choice. They'll go mad otherwise. So they change their mind. They practice. I mean, it's up to us. We're not babies. We don't, we just, the, the trouble is with us in the West, we just want to be stroked and make, we want to have a charismatic person to make us feel happy. Yeah. I mean, if Buddha's techniques are working, we have to have enough intelligence to listen to them and then turn them into our own language so we can understand them and use them, you know? Okay. Everyone's different. We have different ways of framing things. But the first step is we have to understand what Buddha's saying. We can't just make up something. We have to understand exactly what Buddha's saying. And if it's actual real, if it's valid, then we'll say it in any language that works. Mm -hmm. It's up to us. But it's got to come from validity, not just some made-up nonsense. Excuse me, we have any, if we have any comprehension of what attachment is, that is a, a farcical joke, that question. Mm -hmm. it, until we're highly realized, until we practically realized emptiness, we're going to still have attachment. So to talk, we can't even, we can't even transform attachment to a cold, a cold glass of water. So it's a complete joke to talk this way. Mm -hmm. The job is to give up attachment. And that's what Buddha's saying is the cause of our suffering. So what do you mean transform it? It's a uh, joke. The only person who can transform it is somebody who hasn't got it. So, yeah. so then meanwhile, you... You know, just practice dharma. Junior school, control your body, control your speech, control the servants of attachment. Don't, don't stuff everything in that you want into your mouth or into whichever hole it is that you want the organ. You learn to control your body and speech. Mm -hmm. Then you live in vows and then you do purification. Then you get some concentration. Then you learn Buddhist model of the mind. Then you be your own therapist. Then you put compassion into it. Then you be practicing dharma. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be able to have a reasonable relationship by being patient and humble and forgiving. That's, how you, that's what you should be transforming, not desire. Renouncing, renouncing suffering and its causes. So suffering is <clears throat> suffering is all the bad things happening and suffering is attachment. Suffering is getting what attachment wants, which is actually a subtle level of suffering. So understanding suffering, as Lama Yeshi said, I can tell you about attachment for one whole year, but you never begin to understand it until we start looking inside deeply. Mm -hmm. So learning to understand what attachment is and then giving, wanting to give it up, which is the cause of, and giving up suffering. So as Lama Zopa says, renunciation, you have renunciation. When just the thought of another, just the thought, just the thought of another moment of attachment is so repulsive, it's like being in a septic tank. So then you have renunciation. So way to go, baby. Renunciation means giving up, wishing to give up, suffering, which means you have to understand the three levels of suffering in the first noble truth, then giving up its causes, which is the second noble truth, and the causes of suffering are delusions and karma. So the wish to give up, that is what renunciation is.
you need a doctor, you do your research, you go online, you check up, you talk to the other patients, you have confidence, you go, you listen to their advice and then you have faith in them based on your based on what they tell you and then when the medicine helps you you increase your faith because this is based on wisdom so it's intelligence a very good state of mind to have but based on intelligence but just based because they've got a, you don't have a faith in a doctor because they've got a cute nose so is there anything in your life can you think of anything in your life since you were born that you have learned without relying on a human being not one so then to think, to even think that we don't need a teacher to lead us in this uncharted territory of, of developing our mind to perfection, of ridding the mind of all delusions, of becoming a Buddha, then it's absolutely obvious we need a teacher. Because you have to, I mean, if you, if, you, if you have to know you want to play tennis, mm -hmm. if you just say I want to play sport, yes. you don't know what kind of teacher to look for. Yes. So you have to know what kind of thing you want to learn. And that means knowing yourself a little bit first. Right? Well, surely. Okay. So at least if you go to a Buddhist center and you think, I like this, I like to hear the Dalai Lama talk, I, I read the books and it says enlightenment, I'd like that, then at least you know the kind of teacher you want. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, if you do any, any, how would you find a teacher in music? How would you find a teacher in tennis? It's exactly the same process. There's no mystical thing about it. But you don't, I mean, but people are wanting to have some fantasy. You, you, if you go to a center, you listen to teachings, you check out the person, you use your logic, you use your intelligence, and you start practicing. And then you practice every day very sincerely, and if you keep practicing, you're going to keep doing more and more, and eventually, if you will find the teachers that make sense to you. You will, logically. There are three qualities of an enlightened being. This consciousness, which we all possess, completely rid of all delusions, completely full of all goodness, which means it has perfect wisdom, it sees all, be all things as they are, Buddha says everything is knowable, it sees the minds of all sentient beings, all their past and all their future, it has infinite compassion for every single one of those sentient beings as if they were oneself, there's this infinite wish only to benefit them and the power to do so, that's a Buddha and that consciousness pervades the universe. So the only way to understand that, we have to know first intellectually, and then we have to know the methods of how to achieve it, but then we have to look at these real living beings, the Dalai Lama, Lama Zabarimshe, anybody who is our Lama, they're the living example, trying every inch of their being to show us by their presence exactly what a Buddha is. So we have to open our hearts to see it. And that's what a teacher is. They're, they're showing us a perfect example, they're the mirror image of a Buddha. But we have to know what it means, and we have to look into it, and have to open our minds. That's, what it, that's, that's the thing, and there's, there's an infinite wisdom, infinite compassion, infinite power. That's what a Buddha is, and every one of us can become it.